Well, good evening, Conroe ISD family. Welcome back for our update number two of this COVID-19 situation here in Conroe ISD. My name is Curtis Nall. I'm the superintendent of Conroe ISD. We appreciate those of you that are joining us tonight on Facebook Live. Um, also, welcome to those of you that might be catching us later on our Facebook feed or on YouTube. Um, down the road. We appreciate you taking the time to uh, check out our video. Um, let me start tonight by just kind of re-emphasizing to you that we're all okay. Um, this is a stressful time. What a week this has been. Um, it, it seems amazing to me that it's only been 72 hours since we last visited, but that's really all it's been. And I know that our worlds have changed significantly, uh, even in that amount of time. Um, with the new restaurant restrictions and different things that are going on in our community. I want you to know that we're fine and we're going to be okay through this. Um, when we do return back to our normal, uh, it's going to be wonderful. Uh, and even through this stretch, we're, we're all going to be okay. Uh, there's a lot of things in this world right now that are creating stress in your life, in my life, in your family's life. And I want to encourage you just to relax. Nothing that I'm going to share with you tonight is meant to be a stressor. Um, we're going to share a lot of information, but I want you to know that um, whatever is normal in your house, whatever decisions that you need to make in your house over these next few weeks for your family to stay safe, for your, sam for your family to be healthy, and for your kids to be happy, that's fine. And whatever we need to do when we come back to school to help your kids catch up, that's exactly what we will do. So um, let us all just do the best we can to relax and, and make the best of this situation. I have a lot of great information to share tonight. Um, I will tell you up front, for those of you that might be nervous as you're logging in, I have no big breaking news tonight like we did last week. So this is gonna be a little more of a conversation tonight, um, just a sharing of information. I've made some notes here of some different things that I, that I want you to know moving forward that'll help you interact with your schools over the next few weeks. Uh, and then we'll be joined by Denise Sapola, who is our um, coordinator of guidance and counseling, and she's going to share a little bit with us about how do we deal with the stress that we're all feeling and how do we help our children um, deal with the stress that they may be, may be feeling at this time. Uh, one of the things that I want to share with you, because I've, I've seen it and heard it over the last few days, is how much we miss your kids. Um, I've been on campuses these last two days as I've seen cars roll through and we've been able to um, give food to families that needed to pick up food. And the true highlight of that has been seeing kids and seeing the kids excited to see their principals and excited to see their teachers out there handing them food and um, know that we miss your kids and know that uh, students, um, if you're wondering how your teachers are feeling, you know, you might be missing your teachers, know that they miss you a lot. Um, and they're worried about you and they want you to be feeling good. Um, and they're excited to once again be interacting with you. And we'll, we'll talk about that, what that's going to look like tonight as well. But because we do miss you, we're, we've uh, found an opportunity for us to get to see your kids a little bit. You may remember on the first day of school that we uh, put out a little Facebook image that says, hey, share pictures of your first day of school. And you can either email those to our communications department or message through Facebook. Well, we're gonna do the same thing now about you sending us images of your kids of the favorite activity that maybe you've done as a family during this closure. So it might be you snuggled up with your dog reading a book. It might be baking a cake in the kitchen. It might be going for a family walk, but we encourage you to share those pictures. I know that it will mean the world to our staff um, just to see that. And I think for all of us, just as part of this community, we need to see the good. We need to see uh, the positive things that are happening as a result of this and not just focus on um, what the negative pieces of this situation are. So we're gonna have a separate post that will give you the email address that you can send that to, or you can message us straight through Facebook, but we really hope that you'll take us up on that. I know there'll be some great pictures and we would really love to see the kids uh, having a good time at home. Uh, as I said, there's no real breaking news tonight. Um, one big piece of news that did come out today was that Governor Abbott did a proclamation closing schools across the state of Texas through April 3rd. Now that doesn't change anything for us. Um, we are set to close through April 10th and hoping to return on April 13th. That has not changed. That's still the, the status for us. I know that there was some confusion. People read that the governor closed schools and they thought maybe he closed schools for the entire school year. He did not. 
So he said only through April 3rd. So our target date is no different today than it was when we last spoke. April 13th is still our target date to return back to school. Now, one thing that did change today as far as dates go is the UIL. Uh, that is the governing body of all of our athletics and fine arts um, activities. They pushed out and said no activities could resume before May the 4th. So um, that's really kind of right on schedule with, with our closure date. If we were to come back on April 13th, that would give our students a few weeks of practice time before they could begin competition again on May 4th. So hopefully all those dates and timelines stay the same. And if they do, we're going to be in good shape uh, when the UIL gives us more information about how we might return to competition in May. Uh, we talked about on uh, Monday that our big focus for this week was going to be feeding students that needed meals during this time off. Um, so proud of our child nutrition staff and campus staff that have worked hard uh, we did meal distributions on Tuesday and Thursday of this week. During those meal distributions, we had 10 sites throughout the school district, and we were giving multiple days of uh, breakfast and lunch. And I know we had a few comments, people questioning, hey, that's great. You, you're giving out meals on Tuesday and Thursday, but what about Wednesday and what about Monday? So I want you all to know that when we give out meals, we give out meals for multiple days so that... Um, People don't have to drive to our campuses every single day to get the meals. We're trying to make it a little more convenient and give multiple days meals at one time and then help people get back about their business. Um, we have given out in just our two days of doing this almost 60,000 meals. It's unbelievable. Thank you to our child nutrition staff and everybody that's been a volunteer. I know there are more of you out there that really want to volunteer. Uh, if you, if you really want to volunteer, you can email the, the campus principal of one of the distribution sites and, and talk directly to them. They are coordinating the volunteers. And so I would hope that you would talk to them. Please don't just show up to volunteer. We are trying to practice our social distancing. We don't want too many volunteers on one site. Seniors, um, we talked to you for a little bit, class of 2020. Uh, I know this is a really stressful time for you and, and you just want to get back to normal. Um, no new news tonight for you. Uh, proms and graduations, we have not made any announcements as far as cancellations. If we return back on April 13th, uh, most of the proms are still after that date. And so we're hopeful for those, but it's just too early to know for sure. Uh, I did talk to our venues for graduation just to let them know that we have not canceled. Save our spots. We're still hopeful that those are going to go um, as we have planned all along. So it's just more to come. But you know, be relaxed on that. I know it's it's you really want it to happen, but we haven't canceled. So if you hear anybody talking about that, it, that has not happened yet. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna hold off as long as we can because we want you to have that special opportunity. Now next week we go into what will be our new normal. Um, for the coming weeks. Uh, our campuses physically will remain closed to the public. Um, we're trying to practice social distancing and keep groups from forming, and so we won't have the buildings unlocked. However, our buildings will have regular office hours. Uh, all of our buildings in Conroe ISD will be open 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day, and I, what I mean by that is open for business. So you can email or call, and we will be able to serve you. Now, we're trying not to have too many people on staff uh, in the buildings. And so when you call, you might be speaking to someone that's working remotely from home, or you might be leaving a voicemail, and then we will pick that up from home and then forward it to the right person. So I would ask for a little patience if it takes a little longer for you to get a call back as we try to route uh, calls through the proper systems. Now, starting on Monday, when you go to a campus website, prominent, uh, prominently displayed on a campus website, you're going to see a special email address and a special phone number to be used during this closure time. Those will be phone numbers and emails that will be monitored each and every day from 8 to 3 so that uh, we don't want you to call and leave a voicemail on somebody's um, voicemail address that doesn't get checked and then you don't get served. So we'll leave all messages on that main line and then we'll make sure that we get uh, the proper person to call you back and to help you. If you do need to come in to pick up a form or to pick up medication, any of those things, we would ask that you call or email and we'll set an appointment time for you to come in and we'll be able to serve you in any way that we need to um, that way. So please just don't come up. The doors will be locked. You won't be able to get in, but if you call and get an appointment, we'll take care of you. Um, our building closures do include our playgrounds 
and all of our athletic facilities. Remember, this is a time where we're trying to practice our social distancing. And so if you go to a playground and a, and a child happened to be sick and cough on a piece of equipment and then your child follows, then they may be susceptible to getting sick themselves. And so it's better if we don't interact in that way. So separating out. So please avoid going to the playgrounds, avoid going to our athletic facilities during this time as well. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about distance learning. I talked on Monday that this would be our uh, path moving forward, and, and we're so excited about the work that's been done to prepare for this. Some of you may have already been in contact with your child's school, and some of you haven't. Our teachers have been working so hard. Uh, you think about that, that they have done this job their entire career, and then in a matter of 72 hours, we've asked them to completely flip 180, everything that they've ever done, and change the way they deliver instruction, change the way they interact with students, um, but produce a quality product. And I will tell you, the work that I've seen done out there is amazing. You have amazing teachers that work that work with your kids every day and amazing principals. And our curriculum and instruction department that works here in the central office has done so much to support those teachers. And so you're going to see a lot of information today. And, I, and I'm going to back up before I before I start to share all of this with you. I want you to choose how you receive this information, all right? Once again, this is not meant to be a stressor to you. We're gonna provide you with more information than you could possibly ever use, both from your campus as they are sharing information with you and then the resources that we're giving you as a district. If you consume all that and think that you have to do everything we're sharing with you, we are going to stress you out and we don't want to do that. We're trying to give you simply a menu for you to choose what works for you. We understand completely that there are some families that you may only have one or two hours in the evening when you return home from work to actually work with your kids academically. While there are other families that might have more opportunities through the day and you're looking for activities and you're looking for a daily schedule from us that might help you work with your child. So we want to provide all of that, but know that if you don't, uh, if you're not able to do all those things, you're going to be okay. There's not judgment from us uh, on that, but we just want to share as much information as we can. Uh, along those same lines, we're going to have a high-tech and low-tech opportunities to work with this curriculum. So there may be some of it that's, that's online and other that's paper copies, and either way is fine. It, there's there's no advantage to one way or another. Our teachers have worked very hard to provide both opportunities. And so know that if you elect or you choose to do the paper copy because either your internet access in your community is not great or your device, maybe you don't have a device at home or it's not working, or maybe you have four children at home in one device and that's just not gonna work. Um, the paper copy will, will get you everything you need to know and help you through every activity along the way. So um, we can, I want you to feel good about that. So this week you're gonna start receiving information from campuses about assignments. Once again, this, these are assignments that we hope that you can do, but if you can't, we understand. The one place that we really need to work hard, and I wanna to talk to high school students, is we need you to really engage, especially if you are in AP dual credit classes, those of you that are seniors, we you need to pass English 4B to be a graduate. You need to pass government or economics to be a graduate. So, you know, that's really not information that travels through parents. That, that usually travels directly to students. And so students, we need you to lock in and get that work done um, when you're on the high school level. Um, below the high school level, most of that information will probably track through the parents to the students. And once again, you're gonna get way more information than you could possibly use parents. So don't let that stress you out. Um, we're going to have a parent website that's going to go up and I have a graphic here that's going to pop up and show you um, this parent website that will go live tonight, immediately following this Facebook Live uh, presentation. This, this uh, website will go live. We will include a copy of this uh, web address in the comment section uh, underneath this Facebook um, broadcast. If you go to this website, and as you can see it on your screen um, presently, you can, you can go by grade level. So whatever grade level your child is in, you click simply on that grade level. And as you open that grade level, then you will see every subject listed. 
and listen under that subject, let's say you happen to go to fifth grade and science, you'll see an objective for the week. So yes, that it will change every week. You'll see an objective for the week. You will see um, suggested activities. You may see links to videos that are tied to it. And once again, this is above and beyond what you will be receiving from your campus. So if you receive enough materials from your campus where you feel like you've, you've, you've reached your, your goal for the week, then that's okay. But if you'd like more, this is an opportunity for you to go right here to the district's website and get this parent information page. I will also tell you, if you happen to have friends or family or relatives that don't live in Conroe ISD and perhaps they live in another state and they're looking for resources for what to do with their, their children, we're happy to share this. So uh, if you wanna forward that link on to any other parents that you may know, uh, it is an open website that anybody can go to and we're happy to share those resources. Bottom line is we want kids to learn, not just Connor ISD kids. We want all kids to learn during this process. So you, you are welcome to share that. Once again, you will see it by grade level. You'll also see a technology help section on that page. So if you're having technology issues uh, that you need to help resolve, that'll guide you. And then also um, social and emotional learning. So what we'll talk about here in a few minutes with the counseling side is also on that website. So hopefully you will have a chance to go and take a look at that site tonight. It'll be up and it will be updated um, throughout this closure. Once again, each week it will be updated with new information. So hopefully you will enjoy that. That was um, created by our curriculum instruction department uh, led by Dr. Edith Upshaw. And we're, we're so appreciative of the work that they've done. Uh, we also have a site that is similar to that, but a much more in depth that we have sent to our teachers. So all the campus teachers have access to a site similar to this, but with much more in-depth information about their curriculum that will assist them in creating um, their lessons over the coming weeks as well. So um, what can we do if we don't have internet access, but we have a device? Uh, I have an iPad, I have a, I have a laptop, but our internet's bad. Um, one tip I can give you is simply drive to one of our schools in the evening or on the weekend, if you have time, I think all of our schools have enough internet capacity and bandwidth and, and uh, strengthen the wireless system that if you simply pull up in the parking lot and pull up next to a school, you can access our wireless internet for free. Uh, there's a guest network, you can click on that. It'll take you directly uh, onto the internet and your kids can engage in any of the activities that either your school has sent or, or on this parent website uh, as well. Also know that just your, your phone access will work on this parent website. So you can access this site through your phone. It looks great, I practiced on it today myself. Um, and you can access all the information, it's all there. And many of the activities can also be done on a phone. So if you don't have a, an iPad or a laptop, that's okay. Um, you can access it through a phone. Um, one of the big tips that, that I wanna give you, and I hope when this is over, um, that you will feel comfortable doing is communicate whatever needs you have with us. Um, many of you may be in a position that you just don't know who to turn to in your community. You have needs within your family and you're not sure what to do about that. Please contact us. We have great principals. We have great counselors that are here to help. And if they're not physically on campus next week, they're all gonna be working every single day remotely. So if you send an email, if you reach out via phone, they can help you. And, and what could that look like? It may be that because you're trying to do this distance learning at home, that you've run out of school supplies at home. You know, you, you sent all your school supplies to us at the beginning of the year and you don't have any school supplies at home and you need some. If you contact us, we will help you with that. And if you can't drive to our campus to pick those up, we will deliver them to you. The same thing with lunches. We have 10 distribution sites and they're spread out all over the, the district. But if for some reason you're not able to get the, to get up to one of those sites, call us. If that means we drive a bus into a neighborhood or into an apartment complex or, or to a, a different remote location to deliver lunches, we would be happy to do that. And it's your campus administrator, your campus counselor that can make those things happen. Additionally, we do have some internet devices that we can deploy um, and check out to you. Some hotspots if you have a device at home but you don't have internet access. We also have some devices if you, if you just don't have a device at home. Now we don't have enough to give to everyone in the school district, but if you communicate to your campus, then they'll be there 
and try to help you and figure out the best way to what will work for you and your family. Um, when you think about needs and you think about how do we get through this and how do we cope, um, one of our greatest resources that help us get through every single day are our counselors. We have great counselors in Conroe ISD. Matter of fact, we have 148 counselors. And when you think about a school counselor, they do so much. Um, they not only help with scheduling when you get to the high school level, uh, but they're there to solve problems and help students learn to solve problems on their own. Well, we're facing a tough situation right now. Uh, as adults, it's hard for us to comprehend how to deal with this stressful situation, how to understand what's really going on. This is new to us. Imagine viewing that through the eyes of a seven-year-old who really can't understand and really has no control over their own life uh, in any way that creates a lot of stress. And so tonight I've asked Ms. Denise Sapola to join us. Denise, as we talked about, is our um, coordinator of guidance and counseling. And I've asked her to share with us tonight a few tips and, and a little bit about stress and how do we manage and how do we help our children through this. So welcome, Denise. Thank Glad you. that you're here and you. please share. Well, the most important thing that we want you to know is the counselors are here to support you, your child, your family. Um, CISD counselors are committed, caring professionals. Our passion is to help in whatever way we can. You'll begin to see online conferencing and telephone appointment availability. And when you uh, see that, it'll make it easy for you or your child to be able to connect and interact with their counselor. If you haven't already seen that, then please email your counselor and let them know that you have a need because we're here as Dr. Knoll said, we're working and we're anxious to help. We understand for us as parents and for our children, well, how do we create a new normal and provide structure and establish a routine with everything that we need to do that's not our normal way of doing it? We understand you may have financial concerns um, due to lack of work or worry over loved ones that are in other areas. What we do know that common effects of stress on our bodies um, can affect our thoughts, our feelings, and our behavior. Stress that's left unchecked can contribute to many health problems for us as adults, high blood pressure, heart disease, obesity, uh, uh, and diabetes. But I'm not here to worry you over that. I'm trying to uh, help provide you with a few tips that help to not create those issues. Um, how do you stay sane when you're working from home? These suggestions work for you as an adult and also can help your children. Set an alarm and get up in the morning. Shower, get dressed, and put self-care first. Try and think about something that's positive and engage in the day with positive interactions first thing. Don't worry about how you're going to approach everything that needs to be done. Watch the coffee intake. Not only for us, that caffeine as adults, but think about our teens as well because a lot of caffeine can raise that anxious level. Um, get your vitamin D, get outside. There's a lot of research that shows that green, the color green, is very calming. So if you take a few moments to get outside to get some fresh air, well, pollen air, but some fresh air, and to see the green, it can actually decrease, decrease your stress. Schedule breaks and movement into your day. This alleviates the symptoms of depression and it increases those feel-good chemicals like serotonin. Have a designated work area. It doesn't need to be a whole room. It might be a corner of a room. But try to keep that clutter-free and somewhat organized, um, free of distractions, and it's best if it's not in the bedroom. Otherwise, when you're trying to calm down and get to sleep and become you know, uh, ready for the evening's rest, you're worrying about that work that's over there in the corner. Also schedule a time for specific tasks and take things in very small chunks, especially if you are feeling overwhelmed. Try not to accomplish everything at once. Make lists and scratch it off one at a time if that helps you realize you're accomplishing what you need to do. Schedule a stopping time, just as you would if you came home from work. Try to disconnect. Be available to your family and so that you're able to uh, make those connections that are gonna be important in handling the stress that's ahead. Find time as a family to talk about your fears, your concerns, and, and even the future. Turn off the news, um, touch base with it a couple times a day if you must, but constantly having that blaring in the background 
is stressful for all of us and our children, especially our young ones, don't know what to make of it. We've heard about our college students who have come home and are at home now, and that constant reminder of them of the uncertainty of their futures is scaring them. So try to have some time to create and have fun and learn something new. Connect with each other and begin to appreciate one another again. This makes us all slow down. Be innovative and dream. Teach your child to cook from a recipe. Do laundry, change a tire, sew a button, balance a checkbook. We never have time to do those things. And did you know some universities actually have adulting classes? Now what those are, are classes that teach fundamental skills, fundamental life skills that many of the students don't have when they arrive as freshmen on a college campus. So look at old photo albums. Talk about stories from your family's past. Create those stories that are so comforting for all of us. Create connection that help us with belonging and create a comfort in what we're feeling. When you invest in this relationship with your child and you're building that rapport and as we're able to do, then when something really becomes wrong in the future, they'll know that they can come to you and get your support. And during these uncertain times, we're all needing that support. Try to remember as we're talking about social distancing, there's a difference between social distancing and so social isolation. Practice kindness and share love and caring. Reach out to your friends and family members via text or telephone or Skype or FaceTime. Uh, make connections and show support for one another. Isolation actually intensifies anxiety and it causes stress, stress and depression. It increases both our rational and irrational feel, uh, fears. So please stay connected. You've received all these resources that Dr. Null showed you. And remember that one of the links on that resource page is the social emotional learning button. So there are additional resources and some excellent apps uh, that are free that will be on that button and also shared with you in the comments section after this broadcast. Many of our community supports have already begun their virtual appointments and availability. So in the weeks to come, if you find that your child needs mental health support, please, or you, please, please reach out to your school counselor. We have the resources that we can connect you with that can assist. But right now, what are five things you can do when you're feeling stressed as a parent? Keep in mind that your children take from their cues from your behavior and stress is contagious. So keep things in perspective. Limit the time you spend, we already talked about, reading about and watching the news of the outbreak. Focus on things in your life that you can control, small targets that are easy to achieve. Eat healthy foods and drink water. Get enough sleep, rest, and plenty of physical exercise. Take a break to focus on the positive parts of your life, like the connections that you can have with your loved ones. What are five things that you have that you can do that your child can do when they're feeling stressed? A regular routine. This helps them gain control of their environment. Physical activity breaks throughout the day to engage, to exercise, to um, take those breaks that re-energize. Proper sleep and nutrition and lots of water, just like we need. Playing with pets, singing, dancing, drawing, creating, playing games, playing games as a family. Focusing on breathing and being mindful of what stress is doing to our bodies. And there are lots and lots of suggestions. All you have to do is Google mindfulness activities and you'll be surprised at everything that's available that's easy for you to do. Take time to laugh. That it, it fills our lungs with oxygen and it helps to decrease those stressors that many of us feel. So laugh together and have fun. Together, supporting one another, we can make it through these challenges. But most of all, as Dr. Null has already mentioned, know that you are not alone. Yeah, so that's a lot of great advice. <clears throat> um, one of the things that I heard people talk about today was in this, this time of social distancing, how lucky we are to live in this this day that we can have social distancing without social isolation. Exactly. To have <laughs> uh, Zoom meetings and FaceTime and all these different ways that you can still interact with the people that you love um, without necessarily being in the same room. Yep. Well, we're, I mean, um, 
that wasn't there you know, previously. So we have that today, it's wonderful. Take advantage of the technology that we have. Um, as much as sometimes we can fuss about technology being a bad thing, it can also be a great thing. And this is an, this is an opportunity for that. Um, I love the advice about turn off the news. I can be a news junkie sometimes and, and you can get so caught up in it uh, where you just, it's too much. And so um, step away, be educated, uh, but step away. Don't Don't get too caught up in it all the time. Well, and social media is a reel of everything that may not be realistic. So when you're talking about your social engagement that we're doing, um, make that be something, like I said, texts and phone calls, uh, not just watching someone's social media, which may not necessarily be a, a true temperature gauge of what they're feeling right now. So I'm going to try to jump over here and, and pick up a couple of questions that have been asked and see if I can um, and I can help answer those. I will say this, um, somebody made a comment or was brought here that uh, talking about what a great job our teachers have done and they really have. Oh, yeah. it's, it's amazing the work that they're doing. And But thank you for recognizing that and saying it. Uh, it, it goes a long way, I will tell you. Um, they're working really hard and, and they're Although they're not in the buildings, they're at home, but I can tell you they're probably putting in more hours at home trying to figure out how to make this happen for our students. And when you take the time to tell them that, it means the world to them. So thank you for doing that. We certainly appreciate it. Um, so how much are we expecting parents to do? We're expecting you to do exactly as much as you can do. You know, There are no giant expectations. We understand that, that you may not be a teacher by trade and you may have a full-time job and you may have multiple kids at home and you may have stressors on finances and other things that are blocking you. So do what you can and that's all that we're asking. If you want more, we wanna have more there available for you to, to access and use, but all we really want you to do is do what's best for your family and your child. And like Ms. Apollo was saying, it, it might look like doing all these lessons and it might not. It might look like simply sitting down with your child every night and reading a book. Mm -hmm. Or it might look like taking time just to cook some brownies or some cookies uh, in the kitchen and, and, and talking about math that way, or just spending time together. It, it might look like singing songs or dancing, whatever it may be, that's all we're asking. So um, we're not trying to, to turn your home into one of our classrooms. We're simply trying to give you all the resources that you could possibly need um, to parent and to educate your child the best way you can over these next few weeks. We're just trying to serve you the best we can. So, um, and once again, there's not judgment here. And, you know, social media, we talk about it, is not always real. <laughs> so, um, don't allow yourself to look at everybody else's social media posts and and place judgment on yourself because you may not have as much time as another family does to, to spend doing these activities. That's okay. All right. You're doing the best you can and we appreciate you. Um, so don't allow that to be a stressor in your life. Um, how are we expected to turn in online assignments? Typically your, your teachers will be communicating with you. So it may be that they're emailing out activities. Now, when you get to the secondary level, most of our secondary students, especially in the high schools, those assignments are gonna go through Canvas and those students are well-versed in how to deal with Canvas and turn things in. Um, beyond that, it may be that you email them back. Now, if you have paper copies, how will we turn those in? Um, it may be that you would, you know, next week when you come back to pick up the, the new box or the new folder that they have for you, you would bring your old one and then your teacher would come and pick it up and they would go through it and they may offer suggestions. Now, are we taking grades on those things? That That's not what this is about. This is not about grades. This is, especially in the uh, elementary level, this is about continuing to learn. Now, once again, when we get to that high school level and we're talking about credits, talking about AP scores and dual credit, credit, um, grades play a much bigger factor. But our focus here is learning uh, more than anything else and learning the fundamentals that you need to either take you uh, to the next grade level so that you're ready when you get there next year, or if you're a high school student to make sure that you're ready for the AP test, or you, you can get your credit at the end of the year and move on and graduate and do all those things that we want to do. Um, there's uh, questions about staff, uh, from staff, I would imagine, about pay. Um, our board did approve to pay all employees 
um, during this um, closure. And all employees means all employees of Conroe ISD. So I, I know I'd seen some comments or questions about, um, well, I'm a child nutrition um, staff member. Does that mean I'm getting paid? Yes. Um, bus drivers, yes, absolutely. Everyone will be paid their standard hours um, and, and all employees will be working from home. And so if you haven't had communication yet from your supervisor, you will get communication uh, from your supervisor. But there will be online training opportunities that will be done um, for all staff members, bus drivers, um, may get additional training as well. And then, uh, you know, our teachers and administrators are all working full days and really extended days as we try <laughs> best to communicate um, with families moving forward. So we, we do appreciate the board doing that. Um, I know we have parents that are worried about um, their children that may be served through special education or 504. Yes, our teachers are going to make every effort to give you the accommodations and modifications that are needed for your students to be successful in the work. If you have questions about that, direct those directly to the teachers. Um, or if you have a, a specific contact that you work with on the campus, please do that. But you'll notice when you go in to that parent website that, that that's addressed mm -hmm. specifically in the parent website. So it's not an afterthought for us. Um, the system was built um, with, with all those modifications and accommodations in mind, and you'll see that in the parent website. Yes. So if I can just sort of um, kind of recap everything here as we get ready to wrap up, we have the parent website. You can go to that website. Uh, maybe we can pull that link back up, and there it is, so that you can see that. If you want to write that down now, once again, we will have a direct link to that in the comments. Uh, we'll pin a comment at the top. Um, of this video broadcast so that you can access that. It'll also be coming to you in an email, parents. You're welcome to, to share that with anyone that you would like to. Uh, and that's all optional information. So um, use it as you would, and it will be great. Um, let me just wrap up with this. Stay safe. Remember what Barbara talked to us about, Nurse Robertson talked to us about last week. Wash your hands. Practice social distancing. Now, I know Denise and I, we're not doing a great job here. We do have our hand sanitizer. I think somebody gave the hand sanitizer a shout out on the uh, comments. Thank you for that. Um, but practice your social distancing, okay? Try not to touch your face. And and Denise, you mentioned about laughing, right? Yes. Uh, I'm going to share with you all. Uh, so last week, and some of you probably caught this, I, maybe nobody called me out in the comments, but thank you if you didn't. Um, Last week when Nurse Robertson was talking, she was going through everything that you're supposed to do and not do. And as soon as she said, don't touch your face, I immediately scratched my nose. So <laughs> thank you for those of you that noticed that but didn't bother to laugh at me. I do appreciate you, but we all have to laugh at ourselves as we try this new normal. Um, but let's stay safe. Let's practice social distancing. All right, if we all do our part here, we can get through this much faster, right? If we if we will if if we can stop this virus now, then we can have a real chance to get back to school on April 13th, and I want that to happen so bad. And I know our seniors want that to happen so bad, and all of our students do. So uh, let us all do our part, okay, to stay safe um, and and have social distancing, and let's get through this as quickly as possible. And I know that we can. So. Thank you all for joining us tonight. We'll have another opportunity like this next week. Don't have it scheduled yet. We'll kind of see how the news trickles in next week, but we'll put a, a link up on, or a, uh, uh, I guess a link or a, some type of image on Facebook. So you'll know when we'll be back live again so that you'll know and you can join us. Um, it'll be at some point next week. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions, please contact your campus first. They're the best ones that can answer it. But if you need us, we're here as well. We're happy to answer questions. Wish you all a very safe weekend and enjoy this added family time. Uh, it's a blessing in itself. So please enjoy. Thank you.